Please open up your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1. We believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism. In other words, we believe in rightly dividing verses to the right group of people and the right time period. Because if you don't divide the verses and then you conglomerate all of them together, thinking that they all apply to you, then you're going to come up with major heresies and major wrong doctrines. Because we got to realize not all verses apply to us. Amen. They can apply to different group of people and different time period. Okay, so now this is just a drawing of the church, all right? Please do not be overtly critical and point out something pagan with it. This is just for an artistic rendition. That way people can get an idea of what a church would look like. So concerning about the church, we believe that we will be raptured before the tribulation. So God has a purpose and a calling for his church. And the church is founded, obviously, upon the rock, and the foundation is Jesus Christ, bless God. So my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Amen. While we're living during the timeline of God's grace, and this is known as the age of grace, actually. For some people who did not know, this is known as the age of grace. It is a separate timeline from the tribulation. The timeline of the tribulation is where the man of sin, the Antichrist, will sit on his throne. And as he sits on his throne, he's going to rule over the world. And it will be a 666 system. And that's what a lot of people are worried about, see. What they're worried about is that during this timeline that they will be endangered of going through the tribulation, especially concerning about this coronavirus. They're worried about if the vaccine is the mark of the beast. Congress passed a bill concerning about 666, and et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of people, they are worried about this man of sin. If he is going to come down, rule over the world during our current timeline, that the church will go through the tribulation and that they must resist the mark of the beast. A lot of people, they're worried about missing the rapture. That's what there are a, lot, a lot of them are worried about. But actually, if you notice from this chart, the church is not in the tribulation. You notice that over here? You'll notice that the church is not in the tribulation. They are separated by this, by this huge event that's going to happen, and that is the rapture of the church. So the rapture, you'll notice over here, that it takes place before the tribulation. It does not occur after the tribulation. It does not occur in the middle of the tribulation. This occurs before the tribulation. Now, a lot of people, what they're worried about is, well, am I going to miss the rapture? So I'm going to give you verses that a saved Christian who believes in Jesus Christ, that he cannot miss the rapture. It is absolutely impossible. How do you get qualified to go inside the rapture? All you have to do is simply, with a repentant and believing heart, you confess the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. It's all done by faith. You're immediately raptured. You will not go through this horrendous timeline called the tribulation. Uh, what if I sin? What if I mess up? There's something that I failed in my service to God, so I do not qualify to be raptured. Well, that's what you got to understand concerning about the doctrine of dispensationalism. Now, what I would recommend is for people to watch Chronology of the Apocalypse. Chronology of the Apocalypse, that YouTube video from me, will teach you that there has to be a church, the Christians will be raptured before the tribulation. They are not endangered. They will not go through the tribulation. If you watch our dispensationalism playlist, that's what I would highly recommend. Amen. In my dispensational playlist, I will specifically show that the verses that people are worried about missing the rapture, that they will not apply to the Christian church. They will apply to the different timeline. All right. Now, some verses that people are going to pull up concerning about being raptured in the middle of the tribulation or after the tribulation, or they have to do good work so that they don't miss out the rapture, what you're going to find out is that those are the books from Matthew through John 
as well as they are, they are going to be from Hebrews to Revelation. In these books, they do not apply to us. Now, there are some verses that you can find that can be Christian, but actually, these books are mainly applied to the tribulation timeline. You might say, why? Why do they apply to the timeline of the tribulation? Because there is a group of people that you need to know, and that is Jews. They are for Jews, they are not for the Christian church. Okay, what's the proof? Okay, so from Matthew to John, you'll notice that during that timeline, Jesus' ministry was to Jews, wasn't to Gentiles. Gentiles, they weren't reached out until later in the book of Acts. A few Gentiles participated, but Jesus' ministry says, I, uh, my ministry is not to the Gentiles, but to the house of Israel. And he didn't even die on the cross yet to give us salvation by grace through faith, not by works. So this was still a Jewish timeline. In fact, it was still Old Testament too. It was still Old Testament, that timeline. It was predominantly Jewish, you're going to notice. And then when you look at Hebrews to Revelation, you're going to see a lot of mentions concerning about end times, last days. See, that's tribulation. And the title of the book is Hebrews. That's Jewish. And you're going to notice Revelation chapter 7 is mentioned about, Revelation chapter 7, the Jews are mentioned there. The apostles who are writers of Hebrews to Revelation, their ministry is to the Jews. Paul even said that in Galatians chapter 2. So any verse you find about missing the rapture or doing work so that you don't miss the rapture or the church has to go through the tribulation and resist and then be raptured later, they're going to be found in these passages. And you'll know that's not applied to you. And in my dispensationalism playlist, I will ex uh, it's expounded even further every verse. So just watch that playlist, okay? Now, I'm going to give you verses to prove that the Christian church... They are raptured no matter what. So then that leaves what books then? That leaves then the remaining books of Romans to Philemon. That's where you want to look at. If you want to find out about how you're going to be raptured, these are the books. Not these books, it's these books, okay? Pay attention to what book. How do you know that, Pastor? Because it's written by Paul who says his ministry is concerning the church. The revelation of the church is revealed to Paul. That's what the Bible says. The, look at the introductory verses in these books. It says, to the church, to the church of Rome, to the church of Corinth, to the church of Thessalonica. So let's look at these passages. We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13 through 14, verses 13 through 14. Notice that the Bible says, In whom he also trusted, after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed. Did you believe? Ye were what? Sealed. Okay, that seal cannot be undone. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. This sealing is up to when? Which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. See, that redemption of purchased possession, earnest of inheritance, praise of his glory, that's the rapture. So notice that you're sealed all the way to the rapture. Keep your hand at Ephesians and go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Actually, you can let go of Ephesians if you want to, but if your hand is still there, I'm going to show you how this assimilates with Romans 8. Go to Romans chapter 8. And then we will read verse 19, Romans chapter 8, verse 19. Notice, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Okay, our creature, our earthly creature state is waiting to be transformed to be God's son up in heaven. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. The creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. See, our created, our creature state in this bodily form, this bondage of sin and corruption, we're subjected, verse 20, 21, we're going to be liberated from that. There's a glorious liberty for children of God. 
Verse 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. That matches with Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. We have the Holy Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the what? Redemption of our body. That matches Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. We are a redemption of a what? Purchased possession. What is that? Redemption of our body. It's a rapture. The rapture is clearly stated when you read verse 21 and 19. That's plain as day. Your body's transformed to be like Jesus Christ, his son, up in heaven. That's the rapture over there. That's the rapture. So notice right here, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit all the way to the rapture. Here's another interesting thing. If you notice over here, it says that verse 20 and 21, aren't we, uh, isn't our body subject to what? Sin. So no matter how subject your body may be to sin, prone to sinning, you're going to be raptured no matter what. So that's why this verse is going to be very powerful. Romans chapter 8, verse 19 through 23, verses 19 through 23, where no matter what sin you commit, you're going to be raptured no matter what. Now, if, if I'm going to be even more stronger than that, let's keep reading. Well, you know, Satan can uh, bring up my sins to the Lord. No, well, look at this, look at this. Verse 30, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also what? Glorified. Remember Ephesians 1, 14, the praise of his glory. Remember Romans chapter 8 and verse, uh, let's see over here. Romans chapter 8, verse 21. It's that rapture. We're glorified, our glorified state, our raptured glorified state. So, if someone brings a charge against us, at verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, who sh verse 33, who shall lay anything to the charge of who? God's elect. It is what? God that judges, justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? Verse 34. It is Christ that died. How about that? See, if your faith is on the basis of the death of Christ, then what? That covers you up. No matter who condemns you and who tries to find fault in you, you're justified. Amen. You're justified. So you are raptured no matter what. Following this context, that proves over there that you're going to be raptured no matter what. Now let's return to Ephesians, but go to chapter 4 this time. Go to chapter 4. Okay, Ephesians 1, 13 through 14 says we're sealed by the Holy Ghost all the way to the rapture, correct? Yes. All right, well, what if I sin? Ah, chapter 4, verse 30, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto what? The day of redemption, the rapture. Notice that the sealing, you're still sealed by the Holy Ghost to the rapture, yes. despite of how many times you sin. Amen. So that is utmost proof that you will be raptured no matter what if you believe on Jesus Christ for salvation. Another passage is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And then I want us to look at verse 50, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And then we'll read verse 50. Now, notice over here that this is referring to the, ra uh, to the rapture. Verse 50, he's speaking to brethren, right? Okay, remember that he's speaking to the brethren. Verse 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57. Everyone knows that's talking about the rapture, okay? So we can see over here this is referring to the rapture. All right. Now, there are two passages that are famous for the rapture. That's 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4. And it's amazing so many people don't even look at those two famous chapters to see that they already qualify to be raptured. You might say, how so? Well, remember verse 50, he's speaking to the brethren, right? All right, look at verse 1. Look how it started out, verse 1. Moreover, who? Brethren. Okay, these are the brethren that are raptured, right? Is that correct? When we looked at 50 through 57? If these brethren are raptured, why? 
I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. Verse 3, Christ died for our sins. Verse 4, buried and resurrected. Right there. So notice over here, on the basis of verses 1 through verses 1 through 4, if you want to be the brethren who are raptured, it is what? Believing on Jesus Christ for salvation. Amen. It never said doing works. Nope. You can't find that anywhere. Amen. All right, let's look at the second chap, uh, the second passage, 1 Thessalonians 4. The second passage that's most famous for the rapture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. People don't read their Bibles. They hear about the virgins who missed out the rapture uh, because they didn't keep the Holy Spirit burning. Whoa, 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 what book is that? What chapter is that? They're not rightly dividing. Group of people, time period. That's Matthew 25. Is that Romans to Philemon? No. Look at Romans to Philemon. Don't look at the wrong one. 1 Thessalonians 4. Okay, everyone knows verse 15, 16, 17 is the rapture, right? Everyone knows that. But look at verse 14. It started out before it told you the rapture, just like 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 5, it started out who uh, it started out what to do before it talked about the rapture. What is it? For if we what? Believe, in verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, if we do that, if you believed on Jesus Christ for salvation, then what? Even so, that means including the people, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. See, God's bringing them with him to heaven, raptured to heaven. Amen. So not just those who are dead, it says even so. That includes those who are alive, see that? So Paul's saying as a matter of fact statement, hey, it's not just you, it's even the dead people who believed on Jesus Christ, God will bring with them up to heaven. See, that's proof over there, there's no work involved. Amen. Do you see work? Do you see work anywhere? Do you see work involved, brethren? No, it's just simply by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So notice time and time again how the scriptures reveal to you that this is all based on believing on Jesus Christ for salvation. Amen. Then that means, let's say the vaccine were to come out tomorrow or even sometime this year, mm -hmm. then that means then this is not the mark of the beast. Amen. So this is not something to be frightened to scare your family members and beat them over the head. Don't take Bill Gates' vaccine and get angry with them and then they look at you like you're crazy and moronic. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not for vaccines and I know that this is a precursor to the mark of the beast, but that's what it is. It's just a precursor. It's not the real thing. It's not the real thing. Amen. So do not be in fear. Do not be in fear. God is not the uh, author of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That's not his spirit. The spirit of fear is, that's satanic. That's antichrist. Okay, 1 John 3. 1 John 3. Here's another passage. 1 John 3. Who would have thought that there would be so many verses proving that Christians will be raptured no matter what, even if they sin, that they will still be raptured. 1 John chapter 3. All right, look at verse 2. It's just one verse. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Are you God's son? Okay. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know, what does it say? No? Yeah, 100% no. You can know 100%. It's a fact. That when he shall appear... We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So we're going to be raptured with Jesus. We know that for a fact. Why? Because the beginning of verse 2. Beloved, now are we the what? Sons of God. Okay, let me ask you this question, okay? It's very simple. Let's say that I have a father and I let him down and he disowned me. Okay, he says, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Does even though that he disowns me or he separates from me, does that undo the sonship that I have with my father? No, he'll always be my father no matter what, even if I hate him and he hates me. Yeah. Why? Because of that seed. That seed cannot be undone. Are you not the seed of Jesus Christ? Are you not his son? So no matter, even if your father hates you, 
which is impossible, by the way. But even if your father in heaven hates you, he can't undo that. Amen. And if you're his son, what does that verse say at verse 2? You know, you know you're going to be raptured. Let me show you more. So let's look at 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2. There are so many verses. Amen. Go to 2 Thessalonians 2 and then go to Colossians 3. 2 Thessalonians 2 and Colossians 3. 2 Thessalonians 2 and Colossians 3. Now look at this. So many people use 2 Thessalonians 2 as proof text that Christians will go through the tribulations. That's what they do. They, uh, what they do is that they use verses, they use all the way from verses uh, 4 all the way down to verse 12 as proof Christians will go through the tribulation. Ah, but isn't this interesting? If you look at verses 4 through 12, are you in it? Does it say that you are in it or is it they? It's they. So you are not going through the tribulation. It's they. Other people are, not you. Well, what happens to you? Verse 13. But what? We. we. See, what? See, in other words, contrast to the people in the tribulation from verses 4 through uh, 12. Contrast to them, what happens to us? But we are what? Bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. See that? Are you saved? If you're saved, through thank sanctification of the Spirit and what? Belief of the truth. Are you saved by faith? If so, verse 14, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the what? Glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're called to glory. Amen. That's the rapture. Amen. Because look at Colossians 3. Colossians 3, 4. Colossians 3, 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall he also appear with him in what? Glory. See, that's, see you're raptured. Amen. Colossians 3, 4. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13, as well as Colossians chapter 3 and verse 4, it shows over here that you will not go through the tribulation. You are raptured. Amen. You are raptured. Why? Based on what? Based on what again? Belief. Well, you know... I, no matter how wicked, I mean, I think that even though I believed, I can lose it. Did they read verse 13? It's strong. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. You can't undo that. God, ever since all the way from the beginning, if you choose to believe Jesus Christ, he chose you from the beginning. Can, are you stronger than God? When God elects something all the way from the beginning, you can't break that. You can't break that. So you're raptured no matter what. You know why? God chose it all the way long time ago before you even existed. Amen. So how can your existence undo God's planning and choosing that was long before your existence? Amen. So weak and powerless is your existence compared to God's infinite plan. Amen. 